One more thing to notice here is that these symbols, you see, this has a different symbol and then this is a scale, a scale, a scale, a scale. Why are they different? It would not make sense if you have, let's say, more than 200 observations. Then it will be too many to put by hand and we will ha there will be probability of making mistakes, right? We can input wrong numbers. So that's why it's easy sometimes when we export data, when we import import data from Excel file, which is normally generated by Google Google Forms survey or survey exact or survey monkey. We extract our responses in Excel file or CSV file, then we import it in SPSS. We will see it later. But when we input data, we can do a few more things. We we should define their scale. If you remember today we were talking about nominal scale, ratio, uh, and then ordinal scale, right? So we have to define the measurement scale of our data. So let's come back to our variable view again, okay? So by now, one thing we have learned is that the name is the variable name, right? The type is the type of the variable. The type of data we will input for the variable, okay? That's the type. The width is the, the width of the, of the input we will give. If you remember, like when we were writing Burger King, we couldn't write it because the white was small. So we made it bigger and then we could input it. Okay, so that's the white of the cells for each of the, each of the uh, inputs in the variable, each of the observations. Decimal, decimal means that the number of decimal points we want to see. So here we have, so for a string, for names, we don't need any decimals, but for numbers, sometimes it's nice to have decimal numbers. For instance, we see here we have two decimals, zero, zero, zero. Yeah, all the cases we have two decimals, right? If we want, we can increase it, but in our case, it will not really make any sense to increase it. You see, this has become three decimals now. But yeah, it, sometimes when, when you have data, which are very small numbers, then it is appropriate to also show more decimal numbers, right? But here we have more or less integer numbers, so we don't really need to go for high decimal numbers. But this one, <coughs> this, this column here, level, this is very important. What we can do is we can write a bit more detail about our variables. For instance, when I write company, what company, what I mean by company? what I mean by company. I mean company name, right? So I can write a bit more detail about it. When I write cells, you know, like maybe I'm doing this analysis today and I'm opening my analysis again after six months and I forgot what was my cells variable. Was it in million USD? Was it in million Euro? Was it in million, billion, thousands? I forgot it. So it's better to write it. Cells in million USD. So now I will not forget about it, okay? Season, uh, let's say we consider which season, okay? But this is not clear, but we will make it clear. Location, we can write it in a, in a better way. Uh, season of cells, location of store. Advertising expense, we can again write ads expense in million USD. So now if I open it after six months, we will still know what we wanted to mean by our variable names. Okay, so this is the purpose of levels, just to give us a bit more information about our variable names. Then we have this thing called values. What does it mean? It normally means that if we want to, like here, season, season of cells. If you look on the data view, we have one and zero, right? If you remember, I was telling that one is for summer and zero is otherwise, winter or other seasons, right? 
But now, how do we know? After six months, we open this data file and we don't know what we meant by one and what we meant by zero. You know, it, happen it happens a lot, you know. Like, we do it a lot for gender. Like, male is one, female is zero. Or female is one, male is zero. And we don't define it. And after six months, we open the data file and we forgot who, which one was woman and which was woman. Yeah, female, you know. So we forgot. And then we cannot explain the relationship we get. So it happens a lot. So that's why we can use in this kind of situation this column values okay so if you let's say for season i go here and i click here then this window pops up so one is summer right and zero is all other seasons we add it up okay and then we click okay so now we will not forget now we know what we meant by one and what we meant by zero can we do the same for any other variables here which should we, for which other variable it would be appropriate to do the same thing yes so for location let's say we have one and two so let's say we go here one we say rural and let's say two we say city okay urban and we click okay uh these numbers are like numbers continuous numbers this is also continuous numbers so we don't have to give any values for them this is uh labels so we know which of them here we have another column called missing what do we do with missing let's say when we collect the data we did not get numbers for one of them one of the one of the sections we did not get any number right we didn't get any number we, we didn't know what is it it's a missing then what we could do is we can give let's say some weird number that's a minus 999 and it's for season right and I go to season, I go to missing, I say discrete missing values minus 999 and I click OK. So what will happen is now, what will happen now is that when I will do any kind of analysis, the software will treat this number 999 as missing value. Okay, so we could have no missing values, we could have discrete missing values. Discrete means a whole number you know, uh, without any fraction. Discrete is just a whole number without any fraction. One, two, three, four, five, six, but not with fraction. We can actually define three discrete missing values at a time. We can also define range of missing values. So we can say like some range like from 10 to 15. These numbers should be considered as missing values. Along with the range, we can still enter one discrete values for missing numbers. Okay, that's what we can do. But for now, let's ignore missing values. Okay, I'm going for no missing. And I'll replace this number back again with one. So let's consider no missing values in our data set. Okay. Now, column what is column column by looking at it we can have a feeling that it means this number right when you see this number it means some kind of uh, something like this what size but this column is the size of these parts if you click here and make it bigger just do it click here and make it bigger and then look in the column what happened it became big 20 right so which is unnecessary but yeah if we need large space for our variable names and columns we can have it okay we would just increase the column length here 
alignment we have options left to right center which means like now let's say our company is left aligned and everything else is right aligned what is happening here company in the left side and all others are aligned in the right side right isn't it yes that's what we can make it center as well if you want so we can make it center but yeah that's not necessary for now one of the very important part here is this measure this is what we were talking about today in the class the measurement scales for each of the variables we have to define their measurement scales it is very important it is very important because we can the, the, the analysis we will be doing will differ for different measurement scales we cannot do everything every kind of analysis for every kind of measurement scale you know, so it differs and that's why we have to define it properly so first of all if we if you remember I was telling you that in the spaces they have only three in theory we have four right nominal ordinal interview uh, interval and ratio right but in the spaces they combine interval and ratio as a scale which we can see here a scale is interval or ratio and then we have ordinal and nominal right but here you see here we see only two options because we had a spring you know a spring can be a scale that's why they're not showing us the scale option so so first of all this company company names these are nominal right these are just labels these are not saying anything about who is better than what or anything like that so we just give it nominal scale this is unknown and and if you remember when I was talking about these symbols these symbols here you see these are the this is what the symbols reflect the scale reflects the scale ordinal reflects like some hierarchy and nominal is like yeah you have different names but uh, they do not mean anything they, they do not they mean that you can identify them but it's not like that one is better than another nothing like that okay so now cells cells what should be the measurement for cells should be scale right yeah and season uh, what 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 it should be it should be a scale as well should it be ordinal summer and other seasons is summer better than other seasons yeah, maybe to us to some of us but not really okay let's go for nominal and location so large city uh, rural and urban is there an order not really if we would have said large and a small city then we would have an order but we are saying urban and rural we cannot really say some order okay so we will again go for nominal and advertising expense is a scale because it's a continuous variable okay and then comes role if you click here you see these options input target both none partition and split so input means when you define one variable as input that means it's an independent variable okay if you define one variable as target that would mean dependent variable if you define one variable as both that would mean it can be independent can be dependent both of them if you define none that would mean this variable is not dependent not in, not independent uh, and not neither dependent okay if you use partition I have never used it okay so I theoretically what I know is that it, it divides your your sample so if I select uh, if I select this uh, season as my partition then the analysis I will be doing it will divide 
for two different seasons okay yeah that's what i think yeah that's what i think it does and split is also supposed to do similar thing that it will divide your data set into categories and then based on the value of this variable but i have never used this okay so to be honest we can just leave it like this or if you want to be more specific you can say cells is my target dependent variable and others are input and this is not not independent not dependent this is what if you want to be perfect but normally uh, this doesn't matter so much important is this one measure it's very important and values very important type very important these three has to be done perfectly others do not matter much okay so if you have done this then you should have a very appropriate data prepared you see this symbol here right this symbol can quickly show us uh, values and levels just click here and see what happens so what happened when we clicked we see the levels right if we click again we get back to values so we can quickly move between values and levels